toward the top of the stretch. And they're into the stretch. And here we go. Songbird sent down. The holder is alongside. The seven-year wait is over. American foe. It's finally the one. American foe has won. He's just perfect. And now he's just immortal. Hello, welcome to the Capital OTB Weekend Stakes Preview for the weekend of August 17th. Sully Karate, going to be taking a look at five races as we always do on the Stakes Preview. Um, I'll be taking a look at three at Del Mar and then the two bit, uh, graded stakes at Saratoga. The first race we're going to look at is the eighth race at Del Mar. 8.30 post for us here in, in the Capital Region. This is the Torrey Pines Grade 3 event for three-year-old three -year -old fillies going one mile. The ninth race at Del Mar. Uh, th this is the Del Mar Oaks Grade 1 event for three-year-old fillies going a mile in the eighth out of the chute on the turf course. Race number 10 is the big one Saturday out at Del Mar. This is the Pacific Classic Grade 1 event for three-year-olds and up, going a mile and a quarter on the main track. And then we'll take a look at the two big ones at Saratoga. Race 9 at Saratoga is the Grade 2 Lake Placid. This is for three-year-old fillies, going a mile and a sixteenth. And then the highlight on Saturday at Saratoga. Race number 10, the Alabama Grade 1 event for three-year-old fillies. Uh, they're going a mile and a quarter, $600,000 on the line in a field of nine in the Alabama this year but again we're going to th take a look at the three big ones uh there's four graded stakes actually uh at uh there is a four graded stakes at delmar but we'll look at the last three on the card the eighth race again is the tory pines a mile on the main track uh the favorite in here uh, is the Bob Baffert, Gary Marion West owned, owned horse of Joe Talamo, Fighting Mad. Fighting Mad has a lot of speed in here. My one question with Fighting Mad is this is a th this horse is going way up in class. The horse has been working well at Del Mar. A nice bullet work on August 11th and has been working well going into and out of that uh, July 19th race. But the horse is stretching out from sprinting into a route race and there's some good horses in here i'm not taking the five to two price with fit, fighting mad i'm gonna go with classic fit classic fit going out from michael stedham the number three florent Giroux in town to ride a horse that ran well uh, against Darnbar road who's going to be the favorite in the alabama at saratoga in the mother goose last time out had to lead the entire way could not hold off dunbar road i'll take the three to one price a horse that usually comes from off the pace and with the amount of Excuse me, and with the amount of speed in this race, I think Classic Fit uh, gets the ideal trip if this horse reverts back to the Hut Hut race down at Gulfstream in the winter with the horse won at 13 to 1. Uh, a lot of these horses have faced the horses running in the, the Alabama. Uh, the number two, High Regard, has faced Street Band Yuli uh, Leora, who came in second in the, in the, um, Kentucky Oaks and Champagne Anyone. Champagne Anyone also in the Alabama. So uh, I think Classic Fit gets the ideal trip. I like Michael Stidham. First start at, at the Del Mar meet this year and going out for Godolphin. And again, Florent Giroux will have the riding assignment. Sneaking out to number six, Ken, uh, Keith DeSormo sending this one out. Drayden Van Dyke will be up. Uh, I think this horse is the speed of the speed. Fighting Mad's going to go. Sneaking Out's going to go. Kim K is going to go. All these horses are going to be, all the three outside horses are going to be fighting for position uh, on that first term. And sneaking out has done it sprinting and it looked okay in the Summer Oaks, losing by half a length, going pretty quick fractions, uh, losing to My Majestic Rose that day. So out of the three speed horses, I'll take sneaking out in the three and a half to one price. And then in the third spot, uh, I'll use the number five, Colonial Creed. Colonial Creed should get uh, the same trip as Classic Fit. Uh, should be sitting off the pace. I thought it was a very good effort last time out in the Summer Oaks, going those quick fractions. The horse had was on the turf going a mile in the eighth, two starts back, was walking up front, was able to win that race by a length. So I'll use Colonial Creed um, in the third spot. But in the eighth at Del Mar, again, the Torrey Pines, three, six, five, and seven. The ninth race at Del Mar, this is the Del Mar Oaks. Um, grade 1 event, mile and an eighth coming out of the chute on the turf course again. Uh, but this is a nice field. 
uh, for the Del Mar Oaks. A full field of 14 in here in the favorite on the morning line. At five, uh, excuse me, five to two is Cambier Park. Cambier Park coming in from the Belmont Oaks Invitational. Did not think it was a bad third place effort at all losing the Concrete Rose. We saw what Concrete Rose was able to do at Saratoga in the second leg of the Turf Tiara. Um, Concrete Rose, the best uh, turf horse, uh, Philly turf horse. Uh, in the country right now has done nothing wrong. Cambier Park did beat Newspaper of Record when Newspaper of Record was that big, big favorite from uh, that Breeders' Cup race. So we don't really know what's going on with Newspaper of Record, but still it was a very good effort for Chad Brown. John Velasquez is in town to ride uh, in the uh, Pacific Classic on Seeking the Soul, so he'll pick up the mount for Chad Brown for the first time. Again, deserving favorite for Cambier Park. I'm going to use third in this spot. I'm going to go with a horse that I've always been a fan of out in California, and that's Lady Prance a lot, going out for Richard Baltas. Baltas on the turf routes has done fantastic, 18%, 10% in 109 graded stake starts, and a horse that has had some really good speed workout so that's one thing i like to look at um, when a horse has good speed workouts and has good closing speed the last three or four have been very very good including in the honeymoon last time out in the first day of june at santa anita a horse that had a really good trip was a little bit wide and was able to get up by three quarters of a length beating hostess uh, uh, two starts back lost by half a length to maximum rate maximum rate in this race is the number two at 20 to one. So I'll take eight to one all day with Lady Prance a lot. There's enough speed in here to set the race up. Lady Prance a lot most likely will get a jump on the other closers in here. Uh, but I'll try to beat Chad Brown over in California. Uh, the number seven in the second spot is Dog Tag. Another Chad Brown runner. And I, I'm throwing out the Lake George completely. Um, that was a three-horse race. Dog Tag's a horse that's more comfortable coming from farther off the pace, like we saw on the $100,000 Hilltop two starts back at Pimlico. Uh, the one question mark is, will the distance be an issue? I think if Dog Tag is farther back off the pace um, and saving a little bit of energy for that closing kick we saw uh, two starts back, Dog Tag at 8-1 to one, I think takes a ton of money. Chad Brown and Drayden Van Dyke uh, teaming up. First start together here in 2019. I didn't think Dog Tag ran bad at Saratoga last year. Picked up a win as a maiden still in PG Johnson. So um, I'm going to use the 8-1 to one Dog Tag underneath the 8-1 to one Lady Prance a lot. And then Cambier Park in the third spot for me. She is the horse to beat in here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Especially run, if this horse runs like in the Belmont Oaks Invitational. Running an 86 buyer, running a 90 buyer in the Wonder again. Cambier Park is going to be very, very tough to beat. I just think the rail is going to do a little bit of issues. This is a very deep field. The first start out west. Um, I I'll going to side against Cambier Park, but nonetheless, if you get 5-2 to two on this horse, that could be a steal. But in the Del Mar Oaks, this is a wide open, on paper race. A full field of 14. 11-7, 1, and 14. Moving on to the big one Saturday night, the Pacific Classic, 9.30 post time here on the east, 6.30 out west. Um, the, the This is always a fantastic race, the Pacific Classic. Grade one event, a mile and a quarter, a million dollars on the line. I went 5.83 and 2. I just think Seeking the Soul has run extremely well for Dallas Stewart. Since the uh, Pegasus World Cup, I didn't think the Dubai World Cup was bad at all. Came back in the Ali Sheba, kind of had a brutal trip there, had the battle for position, and still ran a 95 buyer. Buyers alone, seeking the soul, blows his field out on paper. Um, I, I'm really interested why Dallas Stewart sent Seeking the Soul to Pacific Classic. You would think Seeking the Soul, perhaps the Woodward at Saratoga, but nonetheless, is a deserving lukewarm favorite in here. And a repeat of that, Stephen Foster will have Seeking the Soul very, very tough to beat in here. Again, John Velasquez out west to ride for Dallas Stewart. The number eight is Campaign. Campaign, Rafael Bejarano, John Sadler. Uh, I, I thought the last three or four were very good for Campaign. Another horse with a serious closing kick. Looked great going a mile and a half at Del Mar. Um, and I just think if this horse can repeat like last time out, a 94 buyer, a 96 buyer, 6-1 to one is very fair for uh, Rafael Bejarano and John Sadler. A horse that's raced well against McKinsey, Gift Box, and Mongolian Groom who's in here. Mongolian Groom should take some money from that 20-1 to one morning line price. So um, again, a horse that's 
raced well on the turf course. They switched the horse to the dirt this year. Has looked great going my uh, route distances. Looked great in the Brooklyn against Marconi, Realm, and Rocketry. I'm going to use Campaign in the second spot. And then the three is Pavel. Pavel's a horse I, I'm, I'm always confused on what I want to do with this one. A horse that has not won since last June in the Stephen Foster. Uh, I thought the Breeders' Cup had a little, the horse had a little bit of a tough angle, ran in this race last last year, lost to Accelerate by 12, Accelerate looked like a different horse um, in that Pacific Classic last year, was more than much the best, uh, but I think it's coming into some good form as well, they tried going um, to the Met Mile, I thought that was a little bit of a stretch for Pavel, came back, went a mile and a quarter in the Suburban, I thought it was a very good effort losing to um, Catholic Boy and Preservationists. So uh, I think 7-2 is a little short for Pavel. But nonetheless, a horse that can win from on the pace, can come from off the pace, has had experience at the distance and at Del Mar. 7-2, I'm not taking on top. I won't take on top. But a horse that nonetheless can be very competitive in these type of spots. And again, another horse, Buyers Alone, um, fits in nicely with the rest of this group. Quip, I'm going to use in my mix as well. I think if Quip gets to the lead, that's where Quip is the most dangerous for Rudolph Brissett. Florent Giroux will ride. Um, the Oaklawn Handicap, two starts back, was very, very good. Coming from off the pace in the slop, beating Lone Sailor. Looked great against Seeking the Soul in the Stephen Foster. So, if you're all in on Seeking the Soul, Quip ran a huge race in the Stephen Foster last time out. Losing by a neck, a career best of 104 buyer. Quip at 9-2 is one that should not be ignored with very, very good uh, owning connections, as we know, with China Horse Club and Windstar Farm. But in the Pacific Classic, I went 5-8-3-2. All right, that's going to take us to our break. When we come back, we'll take a look at the two big ones at Saratoga Saturday afternoon. A day at the track isn't complete without a night at the horseshoe. Great food, hot music, and cold drinks. So why go downtown when all the action's just across from the track? The Horseshoe Inn at the corner of Nelson and Gridley. Welcome back to the weekend stakes preview. Sully Crotty in taking a look at uh, the two races at Saratoga, the two graded stakes races this weekend on Saturday, uh, which is the Lake Placid grade two turf event and then the Alabama. We looked at the th three of the four graded stakes over at Del Mar. Um, and again, that Del Mar card, we are taking nighttime thoroughbred. So if you want to bet the Del Mar card, the Pacific Classic goes off at 930 at night fantastic racing after the Alabama card at Saratoga. We are taking nighttime thoroughbred here at Capital OTB to take all the wagers and all the uh, betting at Del Mar for their Pacific Classic Day. Uh, but again, I'll take a look at the Lake Placid race number nine. Um, this is a very good field as well. Chad Brown sending out uh, two horses that ran one, two, and the three horse Chad Brown, Lake George last time out, and that is Blowout and Regal Glory. Regal Glory was the longest shot on the board in the Lake George and got it done very, very impressively. Uh, to me, I think a deeper field is going to be a little bit tough for Regal Glory. I think Regal Glory is going to try to get that same trip from a stalking roll and let the the leaders kind of set quicker fractions for this one. Uh, I'm taking a stand against Regal Glory in here. I'm going to use third, but I'm going to use the, the, the top three on the, the morning line in here. Um, I loved Varenka. I loved Varenka last time out for Graham Motion. I thought this horse should have went off way less than two and a half to one. Beating Catching a bit, who was a big favorite for Chad Brown. Um, and I thought going into the Breeders' Cup, I thought it was a good effort at 40-1. to 1. Um, There was 13, 14 horses in that field, a horse that was wide the entire way, and I thought ran a decent fifth um, with a really good closing kick late. The last three starts, the horse had not had the best of trips and got the job done last time out in uh, five wide and had a very, very game effort. The mile in the 16th, I think, is perfect for this horse. Looked okay at the mile in the 8th earlier in the career. Last time out, or excuse me, two starts back in the grade 3 regret at Churchill. An 11 horse field. The horse that just really couldn't run by is a big favorite that day, but lost the hard legacy in winter sunset. So there's not a lot of shame there losing to those two. But again, that five wide effort last time out at Saratoga, uh, beating. 
<clears throat> excuse me, catch a bid, who's another very good turf horse for Chad Brown. I'm all in on Varanka at three to one. Uh, the number four is Blowout. Blowout is another horse that I was high on ever since that maiden breaker. Went to the Florida Oaks, lost to Concrete Rose at thirteen to one by half a length in that ten horse field. Excuse me, eleven horse field. Came back, ran in a stakes race, lost the field glorious. Who's going to take some money in here for Christoph Clement after a good wild applause? But blowout, I was surprised didn't go off as the favorite in the wild applause. Went off at two and a half to one. Uh, got the job done there, closer to the lead. I think blowout's going to go to the lead to set the race up for Regal Glory. Uh, but nonetheless, I thought it was a good effort in the Lake George, even though there was only three horses beating Dog Tag. Um, and losing to Regal Glory by half a length. This is another horse out of the two Chads. I'll take the blowout in here. Facing a little bit better down in Florida. The wild applause I think was a much better race than it looked on paper. Uh, I, and again, it's Chad Brown on the turf with Jose Ortiz and Peter Brandt. Blowout at 5-2. to two. Regal Glory... Again, I'll say it again, uh, I think the deeper field is going to be a little bit of an issue. I think there's a lot of speed in this race that may or may not set the race up for Regal Glory, but if I'm taking a closing speed horse in here, I'm taking Varanka, who has shown closing speed against fields of 10, 11, 12, and 14. Uh, so, I, again, I, I think Regal Glory, that was a very good effort in the Lake George. I think the stretch out will only help the horse because the horse was running by uh, the two stable mates last time out. I'm going to try to beat Regal Glory in here. I hope Varanka stays at 3-1. to one. I hope, actually, I hope the horse goes up to 7-2, to two, possibly 4-1. to one. It blowout takes a lot of money. And again, I think the Christoph Clement runner, Feel Glorious, will take some money as well after that performance. Uh, two starts back in a grade 3 event at Belmont. And another horse that I think the longer the better. One, a horse that won at a mile and a 16th, beating some nice horses down in New York. But I'm going to try to beat Regal Glory with Varanka. Um, I just think the last three and every start here in 2019 has been very good for Graham Motion. Uh, but for me in the Lake Placid, I'm going Varanka over a blowout over Regal Glory. One, four, and five. And then finally, the 10th race at Saratoga this weekend. This is the, the, the feature. Uh, this is the Alabama. This is for three-year-old Phillies. A mile and a quarter on the main track. And a lot of... A lot of these races, especially the ter the dirt routes at Saratoga, has been speed, speed, speed. Uh, I don't think it's going to be that way this year. I like Point of Honor in here, uh, the number seven for George Weaver. Dunbar Road's a horse that can win from on the pace or off the pace. The Gulfstream Park Oaks three starts back for Chad was very, very good. I think if Dunbar Road gets into the Kentucky Oaks and is not an AE, eventually goes off as the favorite in there uh so uh, dunbar road deserving favorite for chad but i'm trying to beat chad in all these races today um point of humor a really good closing kick in the coaching club american oaks won the black eyed susan very impressively in a nice field of eight beating yuli who's the number six in here who i'm going to use fourth um but again the Gulfstream park oaks i think that that trip was not great at all uh but uh, since then, the Black Eyed Susan was very good, and then the Coaching Club American Oaks was very good. I think a repeat of that 91 buyer will have uh, Point of Honor very, very tough to beat in here. George Weaver uh, and Javier teaming up. They're 0 for 3 at Saratoga, uh, but they're 2 for 9 on the racing year. So it's not like the, they don't team up a lot. I just think this... With the amount of speed in here, Point of Honor has the best trip. But, again, it's been speed, speed, speed the last couple of years, uh, especially in these dirt routes. And we've seen it this year at Saratoga. The speed has been killing. Uh, I'll try to change that with Point of Honor. And, again, a little bit of a buzz horse going in. And it's reflected on the morning line. Uh, Dunbar Road, uh, I just think this horse going back to two turns may have a little bit of an issue. Looked great breaking the maiden down in Florida. And, again, that Gulfstream Park Oaks going two turns was very good. But how good was the rest of the field? I've never been a fan of Cookie Dough. Cookie Dough lost to Jeltrin, who was forty to one. Champion anyone, even on paper, does not look did not look like a great run in the coaching club. I thought was very good. Um, and then the Gulfstream Park, or excuse me, the Kentucky Oaks, I thought was a very good effort from Champion Anyone. But other than that, I didn't think it was a very good Gulfstream Park Oaks field. So I'm trying to beat Dunbar Road. I think the two turns may have a little bit of an effect on her in here. Um, so I'll go with the closing speed of point of 
point of honor. The two is Lady Apple coming in from the Iowa Oaks and winning the Island Iowa Oaks last time out. Beating Yuli by half a length. Another horse that's going to be very forwardly placed in here and should be the controlling speed. Uh, Yuli's going to go to the lead. Lady Apple's going to go to the lead. They're probably going to tussle like in the Iowa Derby. So the fractions should be quick. They're not going to run a 48 or a 49, probably around a 4. Uh, 47 and change, 46 and change, probably for the half mile. Lady Apple's a horse that's run quick fractions uh, at Oaklawn Park, at Churchill, and has shown game efforts late stretch to get the job done. Uh, I just remember the fantasy. Every, it looked like two horses were going to go by um, uh, Lady Apple. And they did go by Lady Apple, and Lady Apple came back and won by a length, beating Emotion, Emotion, and Brill. So uh, I, I like Lady Apple in here. I think the speed can be a little bit dangerous. I'm going to use defensively in all my multiples and exotics. Uh, but nonetheless, I think the amount of speed with Yuli, uh, Street Band's got a lot of speed with Sophie Doyle coming into town after a good Indiana, Indiana Oaks win by three and a quarter. And then to the outside, um, off topic has shown a little bit of speed to push the pace. So out of the, the speed horses in here, I like Lady Apple. The two closers in here with Champagne Anyone and Point of Honor. Obviously, I like Point of Honor just a little bit more than the Wilkes Runner. But the Wilkes Runner could be sitting on a big race as well, especially a repeat of the Kentucky Oaks or the Gulfstream Park Oaks. But for me, in the Alabama, 7-1, 2-6. That's going to wrap things up for the weekend stakes preview. Uh, again, we are taking nighttime thoroughbred. So you, uh, with, with the late races over at Del Mar, the Pacific Classic goes off at 9.30 at night. We'll be taking nighttime thoroughbred to take all the Pacific Classic bets over at Del Mar. Um, but again, next week... It's all Saratoga in the stakes preview. It is Travers Week. It is hard to believe that it's already Travers Week uh, next for our preview next week. And that card is always stacked. Looking forward to that week and looking forward to an all all day great racing here locally at Saratoga and then out west at Del Mar. So good luck at Saratoga. Good luck at Del Mar. We'll see you next week for a stakes preview all about Saratoga and the Travers Stakes.